Hi friends. In her Emmy's acceptance speech for Best Writing in a Limited Series, Michaela Cole offered the following advice. In a world that entices us to feel the need to be constantly visible, for visibility these days seems to somehow equate to success. Do not be afraid to disappear from us for a while and see what comes to you in the silence. Which I don't know if you follow the same kind of people around the internet that I do, but that speech sent me and most of my friends into a spiral of examining all of our life choices. Because here's Michaela Cole, making I May Destroy You, winning Emmys, making the kind of media that leaves a legacy, and here's all of us thinking that the way that we might become the next Michaela Cole is by being hyper visible. A lot of creators I know, myself included, maintain a regular schedule of posting, whether it's a weekly or bi-weekly YouTube video, a daily Instagram post, four TikToks per day, or even six or eight hours a day of streaming on Twitch. We do this because the platforms that we use to distribute our work define that regularity as a best practice in order to grow or maintain an audience. They make their money by keeping users on their platform for longer and longer times, so if you want your work to be seen by anyone, you better be seen a lot. But what starts as an attempt to understand social media algorithms and follow their rules has morphed into a quest for relevance, kind of a shorthand of professional success that collapses visibility with self-worth. Being visible isn't just a pathway to help the work that you love reach the people who want or need it, but that being visible is an end in itself, that visibility is a thumbs up or thumbs down assessment of your worth as a human being. And if you're able to achieve relevance, whatever that means, I imagine it's hard to wanna to give that up. But I think Michaela Cole is right. While visibility is often correlated with success, it isn't the same thing. Eyeballs alone aren't really a measure of success in their own right. Do we want visibility because visible people are rich? I'm sure some of them are, but I haven't forgot that 2015 fusion profile of YouTubers who still have to work in the service industry to like actually pay their bills. Is it because we equate visibility with some quality or professional achievement or artistic merit? I mean, I'm not unique in having to put things out there that weren't fully baked because I was beholden to the pressure to post something even if it wasn't something good. Is it because we equate visibility with love, because oh wow, it is not that. If anything, you become too visible and public sentiment turns on you for being around too much. The obvious inverse to blowing up on social media is that every day there's a main character on Twitter and you never want to be that main character. Sometimes visibility can really suck. Suchy Cool wrote a Buzzfeed piece last summer about internet celebrities stepping off of the content treadmill, and I think she put it really precisely. The internet is fun until it isn't. And when that happens, you can decide to sink in deeper, growing obsessed with intangible, often toxic communities that profit from conflict, or you can leave and try to have a life elsewhere. If you build your entire identity, career, and social relationships around visibility, it'll eventually eat you alive. Now, one of the former YouTube content jockeys that Cool references is Bo Burnham, who has for long stretches of his career disappeared from these hyper-visible spaces because of what seems to be equal measures, creative aspiration, and like, extreme emotional distress. I think he's often held up as an example of what can be achieved by getting off of the visibility treadmill, right? Burnham started on YouTube posting song parody videos, but then transitioned to a more traditional media model of working on a show for a year, or even a couple of years, and then releasing it to the public before going away to work on the next thing. Before his critically acclaimed Netflix special, Inside, that came out last spring, his previous comedy special came out in 2016, and in between that he wrote a feature film, Eighth Grade, that came out in 2018. Likewise, Michaela Cole said she took two and a half years to write I May Destroy You without working on anything else. So we're looking at years, plural to write and create things, and seemingly space between those projects even, to rest or plan or come up with other ideas and scrap the ones that don't have legs. I know it's like a Twitter bit that today staring into the middle distance counts as writing, but there's some truth to that. All the puttering around we do in our lives in order to have thoughts and experiences worth writing about is part of the process. Otherwise, you end up with just like hundreds of channels where people only make things about making things. And I mean, honestly, look, it's very tiresome. On the content treadmill, there's no time to let an idea simmer. There's very little margin to scrap something that isn't working and move on. Sometimes you're putting up things that you don't really want to put up or that aren't really fully formed simply because of an upload schedule or an algorithm. So it makes sense to me that you can create something greater if you're willing to disappear. But you also have to be 
able to disappear. It's notable that the artists that I hold up as examples of what you can do if you work on something slowly and invisibly are people with HBO funding or Netflix funding. Or the only real analog I see to this on YouTube is in the leftist media essay space, where people might have small teams and even then they will go three or four months between posting a 40 minute long thesis project about late stage capitalism through the lens of Fraggle Rock or something. And I watch it because they took their time to make it good. But those folks tend to have one, extremely large Patreon communities who are willing to fund that time, and two, have spent years on the content treadmill to grow an audience large enough to have that kind of funding and that kind of brand loyalty that when they do come back and post, people will look for it. Weirdly enough, even these platforms that we once thought could democratize media and remove barriers to creating the things that we want, eventually kind of replicated the legacy media model of like, work hard and pay your dues, and eventually, if you're lucky, you might get a big break, and then you can create the things that you want on your own terms. So when I watched Michaela Cole's Emmy speech, I felt that tug of aspiration. If I could only figure out a way to disappear, I could make things as good as art mom and art dad. I know I'm the same age as them, I don't want to talk about it. Problem is, it came the same week as I just came back from a six week disappearance where after I quit my job and before I started freelancing, I took time off to not work on a project for the first time in a decade. And pretty immediately when I returned, I did not feel like it was long enough. I wasn't like refreshed or inspired. I hadn't produced anything great in that time, but I had to start earning money again. And even that six weeks was an extremely lucky thing for me to get to have. It was frustrating that that disappearance wasn't the answer for me that I wanted it to be. I guess because the real kind that Cole references in her speech, that gives you as much time and focus as you need, that comes with institutional and financial support, wasn't really accessible to me. Sometimes advice is good, it's just not good for you. So what I'm trying to find out is if there's a way to apply the advice in much smaller ways. Although Netflix, if you do want me to go away for a year and produce like an hour of brilliance, I would like to try. But maybe there are little ways of disappearing. Like, I'm not really on Instagram anymore. Could my career be doing better if I was visible in all of the places? Sure. But right now I've got about one, one and a half platforms worth of being visible to give. Also, I'm trying to take my own advice and use this channel as home for some more limited series of my own making. Like my video postcards. I knew before I posted the very first one, how many I would make in total. They aren't over yet, but I'm not gonna let them continue into infinity until I hate making them and you can tell. It has a start and it will have an end. I'm working on this one the most, but the last way of disappearing is that I'm trying not to say anything when I can't improve on the silence or I can't elaborate on what's already being said. I still tweet, but I tweet way less now that I've stopped treating myself like a press secretary who needs to make an official statement on every news event or trending topic. I used to feel the need to make a video or write a thread about every discourse being discoursed, but sometimes the world does not need my take and what I find to talk about instead could be a lot more interesting. There are consequences to turning away from that chase for visibility. I certainly see it in my viewership, but there are also rewards. Maybe someday I'll be capable of making something great in all that space that I'm trying to create. Maybe there will be a way to disappear for a while without disappearing for good. In comments, tell me what small positive ways you are trying to disappear in your own life. If you like this video, you can join the Radish Collective, my community of Patreon supporters, and help me make more of them. I'll see you next week. Bye.